to this update video. I really hope you're doing well this morning. We are 48 days out from the official start of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. So we'll be talking about the Enso region, El Nino Southern Oscillation. We'll be talking about that for a bit later in this video. But uh, before I go into all of that, you may have noticed this on the internet, this anomaly that spans around 2,000 miles with wave heights up to 80 feet. Well, there were lots of theories about it online, but it really was just a system error. So uh, sometimes these various weather tools, they may lag. And I experience it all the time with radar, uh, which is used to indicate where rainfall activity is happening. Sometimes it shows that there is very heavy rain or hail somewhere, that, but that's actually not happening. Uh, these are all man-made systems, so at times there will be some glitches and uh, that will result in uh, incorrect data being shown to the public. So it was just system error, it was not actually some crazy creature out there generating those waves. But nevertheless, let's get on to what is going on in terms of weather activity. And so, now the satellite imagery right now, there are a couple of low pressure systems out there that weaken in frontal system. And... Nothing really crazy overall across the Atlantic, but that rainfall increase that I've been talking about is on the horizon for the Northeastern Caribbean islands. We'll be looking at what models have to show later in the video, but going closer to the Caribbean, we can see these clusters of uh, cloud cover coming in from the east, and that's likely resulting in some periods of overcast skies and maybe even some intermittent showers for parts of the Leicester Antilles. Same thing as we head towards Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, and eventually for Jamaica, some areas will be getting some rainfall activity today. Not going to be for everywhere. On the whole, though, we're not seeing that uh, the infrared sunlight is very colorful, so not much convection going on right now. But eventually, as I've been talking about, the rainy season will be kicking in as we head into next month, May. Now let's take a look at the rainfall activity for today. So here we're seeing it. And once this map is getting more colorful for a particular area, it means that the rainfall chances getting higher and higher. So we can see that a uh, line of those greens and those yellows coming in from the east and uh, towards the northern, uh, the northeastern Caribbean islands, Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands as well. So there could be some additional shower activity as we head through today, maybe even a heavy downpour for some areas. But that rainfall chance gets a bit lower from around Dominica southward through Grenada, including Barbados. But uh, for Trinidad, Tobago, a few showers may loiter by today. ABC Islands will likely be on the dry side. Same story for most of Venezuela and Guyana. Uh, Suriname, French Guyana, a couple showers may be around today. As we head to Colombia near the Pacific coast, it's likely to be pretty active. It is already getting active as there is some thunderstorm activity within the region. And then for parts of Central America, Panama, Costa Rica, Southeast Nicaragua, uh, even including the offshore islands of San Andres and Providencia, parts of Honduras, the Bay Islands, the Keys, uh, Belize itself, sections of Guatemala likely to experience some showers as we head through today. So there's also some of those cloud clusters moving through parts of Central America. But the northern Yucatan should be dry for the most part. Same thing as we head to western and central Cuba, the northern and central Bahamas, much of the Florida Peninsula, and also the Cayman Islands, although a few showers are possible. For eastern Cuba, the southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, parts of Jamaica and Hispaniola, it is likely that there will be some additional rainfall activity as we head through today. And uh, there is no doubt that for much of Jamaica, we definitely need a good rainfall relief. And many areas haven't had that at all. So hopefully there is some substantial rain across some areas today. But for now, Euro is similarly favoring the eastern side of the island. Wind forecast here is going to be another windy day for many areas. Winds in excess of 15 knots going up to 20 knots. Gusts even stronger than that, especially in the south Caribbean offshore Colombia. So that area is usually the most active or uh, where we would find the strongest winds in the region, especially with the passage of these frontal systems when an area of high pressure lies north of the Caribbean region. Now, let us talk about that rainfall increase. So this is what the GFS simulated satellite imagery is showing. It's not 
what is going to be there like exactly but this is what we might see heading into the next couple of days so this is as we head into tomorrow then going to tuesday we see that increase and all of that convective activity near the northeastern islands of the Caribbean. And eventually we see more uh, moisture being drawn to the system as it moves out, stretching across parts of the Lesser Antilles. Now, this would definitely help out with the rainfall. I've been saying that. And uh, looking at the icon model now, the greens indicate the moisture. So as we're going to be heading into tomorrow, uh, going to Tuesday, there we can see all of those green shadings around, indicating that, hey, there could be some decent rainfall uh, between now and then for the northeastern Caribbean islands. Euro is showing something similar as we're seeing going into tomorrow and Tuesday. All of those green shadings within the vicinity of the northeastern islands, Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and even towards Hispaniola. Now, with all said and done, this is the rainfall accumulation between now and Tuesday evening. And we can see those purple and those pink shadings popping up. And uh, for now, Euro is showing that it may be the Virgin Islands and maybe some spots in uh, the Dominican Republic that experience some of the highest rainfall amount uh, for land areas but uh, we can see those more colorful shadings offshore indicating up to around five or even six inches of rain but overall we see that for the northeast between now and tuesday evening it gets pretty colorful so there could be some decent rainfall within some areas gfs is kind of in agreement with this as we're seeing but is showing more of those purple shadings indicating rainfall amounts up to two and a half maybe even three or uh, three and a half inches of rain for parts of the Eastern Dominican Republic. So we'll see how it eventually plays out. The general area is likely to experience that rainfall increase throughout this week. Now, speaking a little bit about the hurricane season, this is the updated ENSO probability. So El, uh, ENSO stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. And there are three phases which are seen right here, La Nina as represented by the blue, the neutral phase, which is really a transitional point between the two, which is indicated by the gray, and then El Nino represented by the red. Now we have the uh, different months of the year as seen on the x-axis, MAM, which stands for March, April, May, AMJ, which stands for April, May, June, MJJ, which stands for May, June, July, and going on and on and on. Now, the higher those bars are for whichever phase of ENSO, the higher the probability of us being within that particular phase at that time of year. For example, March, April, May, we see that the bar for El Nino is pretty high. Technically, we are still in an El Nino right now, around a 95% chance of El Nino. But as we head into the summer months, look at how quickly that bar drops off. It goes to 25%. 5% and it remains low through the rest of the year. So uh, we see the bar for that neutral phase, which is the gray going up because we have to first transition to the neutral phase before going to La Nina phase. And eventually as the bar goes up, it starts going down and then the blue bar, which indicates La Nina, starts to go up as we head out in time heading into the uh, coming months so we can see that the chance of being in a la nina is a very very high we're going to be heading there uh, as the hurricane season is going to be commencing and even, especially for the peak of the hurricane season and again the impact that la nina has is that it can help to favor the atmosphere for development there could be more atmospheric instability in the atlantic and less of those upper level winds, which usually help to prevent development. So overall, we could see a more conducive environment that's coupled with the very warm, the anomalously warm sea surface temperatures. That's going to be a huge boost for many systems this year. And another concern with La Nina is that in La Nina seasons, we typically see more systems being uh, pushed further west. Why? Because of a stronger Bermuda high. So a stronger high pressure system would favor a more westward track of tropical cyclones that form in the main development region. But of course, that's not going to be the case for every single tropical wave or tropical depression out there. So there will be times when uh, some of these systems struggle to develop. But overall, it is likely that we could see a more active 
hurricane season. And so that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys in this update video. And with any other updates coming out, I'll be sure to let you know. But I hope you found this video to be very informative. And if you have any questions, do feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.